On September 14th of 2013, two friends, Joe and Amy, traveled to Craters of the Moon National Monument for a planned trip that was to last until the 19th. Dr. Jodine Joe Elliot Blakesley was 63 years old, a physician from the Boise area who worked for the Oregon Department of Corrections in Ontario. Amelia Amy Linkert had worked for the Lowell Scott Middle School where she taught special education. She retired in 2009 and on September 19th, she was a week away from her 70th birthday. The two women had met each other while doing missionary work in Africa in the 1980s. The two quickly became good friends. Craters of the Moon National Monument is an incredibly unforgiving landscape consisting of more than 1,100 miles of jagged lava flows, volcanic cinder cones, and lava tubes. More than 300 known caves have been mapped within its boundaries, but thousands more potentially exist. The surprisingly large monument has sometimes been referred to as the best NPS park that nobody knows about. The two women drove their travel trailer to a KOA campground in Arco, a small town 18 miles to the east of Craters of the Moon. They paid to stay at the campground for five nights, and while there, it was reported that they kept to themselves. Both were last seen there on Thursday, September 19th, the same day they were supposed to leave. It is believed that Joe and Amy entered Craters of the Moon on this same day. Both women were seen at the campground that morning eating breakfast. They then left their trailer at the KOA and traveled into the monument at around 9.30 to 10 a.m., using only their pickup truck and bringing along their two dogs. There are no reports that the two women were seen by any witnesses after they entered the park, and the duo would never make it back to their trailer. When Jodine failed to show up for work on Monday the 23rd, her employer began making calls to locate her, eventually getting the Ada County Sheriff's to do a welfare check on her home. Soon afterward, the authorities learned that the two women were overdue from their trip to Craters of the Moon. Ada County then alerted the Park Service and the Butte County Sheriff that the two were missing. The women's trailer was quickly discovered at the KOA campground where it had been left, and their pickup was found at the Tree Molds Trailhead parking lot within the monument. Their two dogs had been left in the truck, but luckily they were doing okay. The window had been left partially down, and an empty water dish seemed to imply that they had been left with something to drink. It should be noted that pets are not allowed on the trails within the park, so leaving the dogs in the vehicle would have been a normal thing to do. Authorities also found both women's cell phones and purses in the vehicle. All indications pointed to the fact that the duo had not planned on hiking for very long. On the first day of the search, September 24th, the Craters of the Moon Superintendent Dan Buckley requested that the Butte County Sheriff come in and take over command of the incident. Between park staff and the Reserve Sheriff's deputies, they had 12 searchers on the ground this day. All search personnel were directed to search within a five square mile area that encompassed multiple trails. Special attention was given to the Tree Molds Trail as it seemed to be the most likely direction that the two women had traveled. The Tree Molds Trail gets its name from the hollow imprints of where trees once stood that are embedded in the lava flows. The Tree Molds themselves are a unique feature that are the main reason to walk this trail. The area surrounding the Tree Molds Trail, like much of the area within the monument, is extremely rough terrain. To describe it as desolate would be an understatement. It is a rocky, broken lava flow filled wasteland that is full of caves. Searchers were required to traverse these obstacles while checking every cave, nook, and cranny that they could. Civil Air Patrol was able to fly a grid search over the area this day, but nobody, on the ground or in the air, was able to see anything of interest. Plans for Wednesday, September 25th, were to have 20 searchers on the ground along with additional grid searches by air. Inclement weather was expected during this time, with significant showers expected to hinder search efforts. Family members of the missing women also showed up in the area to assist. They described Joe and Amy as being in a positive mental condition and a fair to poor physical condition. They also said that while both women were experienced outdoors women, they were not long distance backpackers. 
Notably, the NPS would classify both women's experience level as beginner or novice, with limited skills. Amelia was also noted as walking with a limp. This led authorities to keep the search area relatively small due to the belief that the women would not be able to hike over the rocky terrain or stray far from the trail intentionally. It was this same day when an Army National Guard helicopter flying grid patterns over the search area spotted a body on the ground. It was found one and a half miles west of the end of the Tree Molds Trail and about two miles southwest of the Tree Molds parking lot in an area called Big Crater Flow. It is an ancient lava flow within the monument and has been described as rugged and inaccessible. Initially, it was presumed that searchers had found the body of Jodine, and she was found face up on the lava, wearing a short sleeve shirt and pants, and without a jacket, backpack, food, or water. A Butte County Public Information Officer would later go on to state that it appeared to the coroner that Joe had died from exposure due to the cold and windy weather that occurred while she was lost. It was proposed that perhaps one or both women had become disoriented during their hike, and had then split up, since Amy was not found nearby. It was also postulated that perhaps Joe had heard or seen traffic on a distant highway and tried crossing the lava field to get to it. Following the discovery of the remains, the searchers redoubled their efforts, flying additional grid patterns across the monument. They looked at bringing in additional search dogs and possibly even cavers to search the numerous caves in the area. After finding the body of Joe, the searchers were able to better pinpoint their efforts. By September 27th, cadaver dogs had been brought in as the search began looking more like a recovery than a rescue. Search efforts continued to be affected by bad weather, with sleet and snow slowing the ground search and fog preventing the helicopters from flying. Correspondence with the National Park Service reveals that there was concern over an imminent government shutdown that was to occur the next Monday. Since this search fell towards the end of the fiscal year and a new budget had not yet been approved, it was a very real possibility that the park rangers and employees involved in the search would have to stop, accepting everyone who volunteered to continue the search and members of the Butte County Sheriff's Department. Fortunately, it appears every effort was made to keep the search going despite the shutdown. At the time, the sheriff believed that Amy may have gotten hurt or sick, and Joe tried to get her to shelter before separating to find help, but never made it. However, two days after recovery of the body, in a rather odd turn of events, and after a more thorough examination by the state medical examiner, it was determined that the body that was initially believed to be Joe Elliot Blakesley was in fact Amy Linkert. Dental records had been used to more positively identify the body. This may not be entirely surprising as pictures show that the two women looked quite similar to each other. Ground searchers then continued their efforts with the new understanding that they were now actually looking for Joe. The daily search logs reveal that footprints were discovered on more than one occasion, but eventually petered out due to the changing terrain. Search dogs also detected strong hits, but were never successful in leading anyone to their targets, and often led searchers in the wrong direction. It wasn't until almost a month later on October 22nd, when a National Park employee spotted the body of Joe Elliott Blakesley on the ground while observing from a contract helicopter. They were about one and a half miles west of where Amy's body was found. She died less than half a mile from the nearest highway, meaning she had made it so close to safety. The area where she was found is called the Aa -Ah Lava Ridge. Oddly, this is essentially the extent of information given in the NPS report regarding this case. Out of about 450 pages of documents, there was no clear description of how Joe was found, what position her body was in, or the condition of her remains. I tried to see if the Butte County Sheriff had any records on this case, since they were heavily involved in the searching. It took them five months to get back to me and tell me they had nothing. Overall, I've been a bit surprised at the lack of detailed information regarding the recovery of both women's bodies. The 450-page NPS case file is mostly made up of information detailing the day-to-day -day search operations. The pages reveal how difficult the search was due to things like weather and terrain. 
So why did this search fail to find Joe and Amy while they were alive? To begin with, searchers spent days in the wrong areas due to clues and possible hits from search dogs. They also spent time searching in caves. A number of factors likely affected the canine's ability to track in this scenario, including the heavy rains that hit the area, and many searchers reported the terrain as being very tough on the dog's feet. It is apparent from the numerous search logs that most, if not all, dog teams were greatly hindered by the broken lava fields of the monument. Large gaps between the flows in the area also prevented dogs from being able to follow a continuous scent. Studies have shown that SAR canines have a success rate in and around the 75% area, leaving a good margin for error. Due to the nature of the terrain in this area, it was unlikely that any of the ground teams were going to have success. But what about the teams in the air? Shouldn't they have been able to see the women's clothing against the gray-brown backdrop that makes up most of Craters of the Moon? It's a difficult question to answer. In fact, this disappearance raises many unanswered questions. It's pretty unusual to have two people get disoriented, then lost, and then die. Why did these women leave the trail? Was it so easy to get lost on what appeared to be a simple trail? How did these women cross the lava fields that even searchers had a difficult time walking on? Because I was left with so many questions, I knew this was a place I needed to visit. I arrived in the area of Craters of the Moon in the summer of 2022, stayed in the same campground that Joe and Amy stayed at, and visited the park early in the morning. Unfortunately, I lost the second half of my footage that I had shot during my visit through an act of God. Because of that, I delayed releasing this video. In the end, I figured that I could do the area justice with the footage that I had. Hey folks, we're here today at the Craters of the Moon National Monument. We're looking into the disappearance of Amy Linkert and Joe Elliott Blakesley. Now, the two disappeared at the Tree Molds Trailhead in the park. And they didn't take any food, water, jackets, or cell phones with them. They left their two dogs in the car, so it seemed like they weren't gonna be gone long. They were staying in Arco, just about 15 miles down the road here. And they disappeared, and they died. And I know a lot of people are thinking and probably wondering how they could have only been two miles, three miles off of the trail, and it took so long for large searches to find them. Well, it's pretty desolate out here. And while I know a lot of people think desolate means it might be easy to find someone, just the rocks and the base salt out here, it's incredibly rugged. It's not hard to imagine that someone could perish and it would be difficult to see them due to all the rocks here. And we'll make sure to get some good shots of what it looks like, but it's not hard to imagine now that I've actually seen it and been here. Still, I think it's important to go into the park and look at the trailhead, see where they disappeared, see if we can make sense out of anything, and see if we can find any answers. So we'll see you inside. So we're here at Craters of the Moon at Tree Mold's Trailhead. It's right behind me. The parking lot right in front of me is where Joe and Amy left their dogs. And then we assume that they headed down this trail and got lost on it somehow. So let's take a walk down this trail and see just what it looks like. Well, we're here at Tree Mold's Trail. And as you can see, it's pretty apparent where the trail is. It's cut deep into this brush. 
So it seems like it'd be pretty difficult to actually find your way off the trail. It's not a very long trail either. It's only about one mile there and then one mile back. How they actually got off trail, we really have no idea. We knew they were only planning on a short hike, which this is, because they left their dogs in the vehicle. But they ended up southwest of here, two miles, and then Amy was an additional mile, at least, and in some of the most rugged territory in the park. Officials call it the worst of the worst. And I've seen it, and if you, I'll show you images of this. The rocks here, are just incredibly rugged. I can't even imagine having to walk on them. So we really don't know what their thinking was. People say they got disoriented. I don't know how much sense that makes. Uh, being forced to walk on the rocks here, it's not something you would seemingly want to choose to do. And then they both died of exposure. It's really quite a mystery. After seeing the terrain of the area, I could in some way comprehend that the helicopters might have missed these two women if they had sought shelter from the weather beneath the overhang of rocks. But then I saw the images of where the women's bodies were found. While they are redacted, they don't appear to be in areas that are completely hidden from view. So how did the helicopters miss them? Was it all just bad luck? Given that they had no water, and Amy, we know, had no jacket, these women were not set up to survive even a single night in this territory. Given the physical condition of both women, it's quite incredible that they made it as far as they did. Amy was the oldest and she had a limp. Perhaps it makes sense that she was the first to stop. But what was their goal? Were they completely turned around and off trail? Did they see a highway off in the distance and imagine that it was closer than it appeared? Perhaps we'll never know, but given the location of her body, Joe did seem to be heading straight for the road. Unfortunately, it took a few days before anyone noticed the women were actually missing. By the time a search actually started days later, both women were likely already dead. Amy was found rather quickly and within the search perimeter, but Joe was able to make it quite a bit farther than anyone had anticipated. There also remains the question of how these women could get lost in the first place. There are moments on the Tree Molds Trail where the trail itself is a little undefined, but there are usually wooden markers to help direct your way. I think the main danger of this trail is for people that go off trail in search of unmarked tree molds, something I know many people do. In fact, you can even find a video on YouTube of a hiker doing this and commenting on how easy it would be to get lost if you lose sight of the trail. I do not want to go out here and get lost, okay? That's all it is. And if you can't see the trail, it would be so easy to get lost. I tend to agree with that sentiment. If you leave and lose sight of the trail in this area, it would be difficult to find it again because everything looks the same. The trail itself is cut into the sagebrush, and really, it is only easy to see so long as you're walking on it. So you have to wonder if Joe and Amy felt confident enough to move away from the marked trail in order to investigate the unmarked tree molds in the area. If they did, they could very easily have gotten lost. If they did lose the trail, they may have decided to try and make it to the distant highway instead of continuing to wander around until they found the trail again. At the time, they were woefully unprepared for surviving this desolate landscape no food, water, or proper clothing. They made it deep into some of the roughest territory of the monument, and to some that may seem unbelievable, but you also have to keep in mind that they were fighting for their lives. People are capable of incredible feats in these types of situations. Essentially, the best and only chance they had for survival was to get to the highway or find the trail. Helicopters and ground searchers were not going to be in the area for another six days. Unfortunately, they were not able to save themselves. After visiting the monument, I can see how someone could get lost on the Tree Molds Trail. Can we say for sure that they wandered off trail to check out additional tree molds? No, of course not. There are no certainties when dealing with a case like this. I go into each case simply looking for the most logical explanation for what happened, and this theory would seem to be it. It's truly unfortunate that a search for the women was not initiated sooner, but they disappeared right before a weekend, 
and nobody knew to look for them until five days had passed. Amy would be found at the edge of the search area, and Joe was far outside of it. They perhaps knew that nobody would be coming for them anytime soon, and made a great attempt at traversing the sometimes hellish terrain of the area. Perhaps the greatest hindrance to the actual search were the assumptions made about how far these women were capable of traveling. A PowerPoint-style search summary was included with the case file materials. It is interesting because it shows a self-assessment the park did for its own search. They state what they thought worked. They also state what didn't work so well. They made a thorough list of things that complicated the search, from the looming government shutdown to psychics. Of particular note is this one. Be a skeptic. Too much stock in developed profiles and clues led us to believe second victim was to the east and not to the west where she was found. This is a smart assessment of the situation, and also probably a hard pill to swallow. Their own assumptions about Joe's ability as a hiker and also errant footprints and scent trails threw searchers off and had them looking in the wrong area. This is likely why it took an extra month for Joe to be found. I think it is important for search and rescue to do these self-assessments in order to learn where they need to improve when future searches inevitably happen. Overall, this case started out as one that, when I heard all the initial information about it in the media and elsewhere, I believed it might actually be one of the few out there that seems to have no rational explanation. But after actually visiting the trail they were on, I think I've completely changed my mind. The case file may be lacking on details of the condition of Joe and Amy's bodies, but it's not hard to imagine that a place like this could kill you if you get lost in it with no resources or weather protection. A series of very human errors with some bad luck mixed in can lead to a situation like this, where two people needlessly lose their lives on a hike that was meant to be nothing more than a two-mile walk before they went back home. Of the many national parks and monuments in the U.S., Craters of the Moon is probably one that many people are not very familiar with, perhaps because the landscape can appear so barren and lifeless. After spending a couple of days actually walking around in this massive monument of nature, you can begin to see a certain beauty in its desolation. It's such a tragedy that anyone should have to lose their lives in a place like this. I would encourage anyone who goes hiking, anywhere at all, to stay on the trail if you're not familiar with the area and always go prepared for the worst. You never think this kind of thing might happen to you until it does. Until next time, thanks for watching.